What's up beautiful people? It's your girl Tia Things back with another video today and today we're going to talk about a Colleen Hoover book. I know you guys have heard about Coho non-stop probably in the last year or two. It's felt like she's talked about by everyone on book talk, on bookstagram, on YouTube, all over the place. Everyone kind of mind blown by her, rightfully so if I may say so myself. But today I'm going to actually talk about her book, Layla, which is a book of hers that is much less talked about. I knew nothing about it. I just kind of assumed it was a cute romance based on the little blurb on the back. I was wrong. So once again, Coho gives us a whole mindfuck, <laughs> excuse the language, with this book and very similar to Verity vibes. So if you've read Verity or if you haven't, feel free to check out that video on my channel. I give a full spoilers video. It's long, it's great, highly recommend. So Layla is similar to that eerie thriller read vibe, but it honestly shocked me the turns this book took. You start off following a couple that just met, they fall in love, all is well, the world is fantastic. You kind of feel like this is just going in a certain direction. And all of a sudden, you're reading a freaking ghost whisperer book where he's communicating with a ghost and they don't really know what happened. Then you're getting flashbacks to the time where they got shot. You're like, what the heck? When was that? Here's this ghost, he's like falling in love with the ghost. The girl's body is being taken over by the ghost. You don't know when it's the ghost, when it's the girl that he loves. It's all very wild. It's honestly was a weird one to read, saying this, knowing I've read over 150 books a year for the last couple of years. This one was odd. It, was, it wasn't as intense as Verity in the sense that you weren't as dedicated to the people, the characters, the story, like you were in Verity. And also in Verity, you kind of thought you knew what was going to happen. The double plot twist obviously made that wrong, but you thought you knew where it was going. This one, you were like just thrown in. All of a sudden he's talking to a detective who's not really a detective. He's like a ghost finder. I, are there ghost finders? Is this a real thing? I don't know. It was all very odd. So let me just take you through a little bit more chronologically now that I finished the book and I can give you a little bit more of an overview. So first things first, the couple meets, they're strangers, they meet, they fall in love. Okay, let's just keep it there. A couple months go by, his crazy ex comes back. By the way, I'm about to give all spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, just skedaddle out of, out of here. Check out my reel maybe that has much less spoilers, but this is gonna be all spoiled out of here. So they meet, fall in love, la di da. It's so great, they're moving so fast. They move in together because why not? Everything is going well. The chemistry is great to read. I love some smut scenes, you know, nobody's mad about it. All of a sudden his cray cray ex comes to their house. You find out later on that she actually shoots the girl, the girlfriend, Layla, um, or is it Layla? Oh. So you find out if that the girlfriend gets shot. They had this traumatic event, which leads to him basically renting the place where they first met and taking her on a surprise trip, a getaway, basically away from the city, away from people, away from pressure to just be better and for her to heal and really just do whatever she has to do to get better. What a la -di da lovely romantic move of his, so cute, like really thoughtful. They're in this place, it's the house where they met. If I'm not mistaken, it's like a retreat slash inn of some kind, super cute reliving their best moments. She's getting more and more out of character. So he's kind of unsure what's happening. He's like, she's supposed to be getting better and said she's acting more and more away from herself rather than more like herself. She's acting weird. He's acting weird. Weird things are happening. Things are moving. She, she's doing weird shit. So then he figures out that something's wrong. Then he starts communicating with what he finally figures out is a ghost of this house. Now, let me just tell you, you're going to think to yourself about 50 times while reading this, 
just leave. Like, why are you not leaving? And you figure out this ghost haunting this place. Don't come at me with the whole ghosts are not real thing. Believe what you want, but I'm in the book at this point, okay? And in the book, there's a ghost. Why wouldn't you leave? Why would you stay? Why wouldn't you tell your girlfriend who is mentally unstable at this time? So many questions. I didn't love that this chunk of the book where he like knows there's a ghost and stays because he's like intrigued by her. I thought it was super odd. Didn't feel like a natural step for the character to do, but whatever. He is communicating with his ghost, getting to know her. Uh, initially, his intention is to help her move on, thinking that he can do that. Little bit of an ego if you ask me, but whatever. And then he gets connected to her. He's realizing he, maybe he likes her more than he likes his actual girlfriend because the girlfriend's acting like a stranger now. So there's just so many ins and outs. As they get to know each other, he finds out that this ghost has been taking over his girlfriend's body. So now he doesn't even know what weirdo things were his girlfriend and what weirdo things were this ghost. It's all a mess. He's falling for the ghost. They're using the girlfriend's body so wrong, so invasive. I didn't like that at all. It really creeped me out. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. Finally, he gets in touch through the dark web of some kind or a website of some kind with a ghost detective who gives him some input. He asks to meet him. And essentially, long story short, I'm gonna jump now, okay? I'm gonna jump from him communicating with the detective, the girlfriend not knowing. The girlfriend finds out. She's like, WTF, obviously. Um, as upset as you can be, she wants to leave this place, obviously. Like, she has a completely natural reaction. This is where things get wild. So you actually find out, I don't know how, if I'm gonna even explain this properly. The ex-girlfriend and the current girlfriend both died the night that the ex-girlfriend came to shoot her. Because she shot the current girlfriend and he shot the ex-girlfriend, if I'm not mistaken, it was him. So they both actually flatlined. He was able to keep his girlfriend alive or the medics brought her back the ex-girlfriend actually did pass away unfortunately i mean she was cray cray so is it unfortunate i don't know but anyways we'll leave it as unfortunately come to learn the ghost is his ex acting like his girlfriend thinking i'll get him to love me because this is what he loves meanwhile she's playing with the girlfriend's brain girlfriend doesn't feel like herself girlfriend's memories are all messed up so okay this is both of their souls left their bodies. Ex-girlfriend's soul went into girlfriend's body. So when she came back to life, she's acting all weird, doesn't remember certain things, doesn't know certain things because she's actually the ex in her body. Her soul da -da 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 -da, went to this house because it was her happy place in life. She's stuck in this house. So he's connected to the soul and has felt the pull because it's actually his girlfriend. I know. I don't know if I lost you. If I did, I'm sorry rewind and try to come back and meet me here because this is wild. So they find this out. They find out that the best thing to do is that they have to swap the souls back, right? He can't date this girl knowing it's his ex-girlfriend who tried to kill him and her. And he can't leave knowing his girlfriend's basically dead. Like this is super weird, right? The plan is she has to die again. And then when this one's soul leaves, this one can jump back in. Whole thing. They make a whole plan. Her sister freaking comes to visit and ruins everything, of course. Then they decide to do it anyways while the sister's there. That makes no freaking sense. Then, excuse me for being crude and again, trigger warning for these kinds of things, but they go along with the murder or suicide. I'm not sure how you would say this because her plan is to go back into her body. And the sister's there, so obviously the sister thinks that the guy like killed her sister. So weird, but really he's bringing her sister back to life. You don't know if it worked for a while. And then finally, spoiler alert, magically everything comes together. She went back into her soul. He's happy, they have their happily ever after. The sister just forgets that she watched the boyfriend kill her sister. Super weird. And this book, like it just ends like that. Like, oh, love ya, all back to normal. Dude, you just took me to a freaking haunted house 
and I'm supposed to be chill right now. It messed with me. It was weird. It was eerie. I didn't like the vibes, but I needed to know where it was going. So at the same time, I was hooked. I didn't love the characters themselves. Like I said, Verity, it ends with us. All of Coco's books, you're usually dedicated to the book primarily because you're dedicated to the character. You are loyal to the characters. You want to know what happens to them. This book, it wasn't about the characters. I didn't care about the characters. I didn't like that he wanted to stick around the haunted house. I didn't like him. I didn't like his ex. His girlfriend was annoying me. Like I didn't like any of them. But I just needed to know what the heck was happening with these ghosts and this haunted place and this couple that is obviously so dysfunctional because he picks a ghost over his girl. Long story short, they end up together and everything's fine happily ever after. But like, I'm not okay. It was so odd that we just dove into the supernatural. But at the same time, gotta give props to Colleen Hoover for being able to write a book with supernatural things and thought like, what? We went from all your perfects to like, um, heart bones to it ends with us verity and I feel like this was like the step up like we went from romantic love stories domestic abuse that was really hard to read if you haven't read it huge trigger warning for it ends with us verity which was like again super eerie and criminal and like detective-y and then supernatural like we've got a huge gradient here so Colleen Hoover I'm confused. I don't know how we got here, but I kind of like it. So if you guys want to read Layla, now you know what to expect. If you don't want to read Layla, now you don't have to because you know what happens. But that's a wrap on my review of Layla with all spoilers by Colleen Hoover. Subscribe for more videos, guys, and I will be back before you know it with another video. Bye!